So I invite you to pay attention to those whispers in your inner ear. And it's not always easy to follow, but when we do that, we tap into that potential in us that is sacred, that is worthy, and that only we can bring to light in this world. So first, part of listening to that call, nurturing that call in ourselves and our children, is learning how to say yes. Yes to who we are deep down inside. And then we have to learn how to say yes, even through a time of great doubt. And saying yes can be about your career, but it can be also about passion. And when I was younger, I loved to swim. Being a swimmer is another piece of my identity. But as an adolescent, as you know, I had multiple surgeries and heavy doses of radiation to my left arm. And I wondered, could I still be a swimmer? I remember the first time I got back into the water after these treatments left my arm debilitated. I had to let go of this idea that I would be a perfect swimmer, just like I'm not a perfect minister, just like most of us who are parents are not perfect parents. <laughs> Actually, if you could raise your hand, if you're a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher, if, are you perfect at what you do? <laughs> Answering the call is about knowing what we're called to do and be, but not about being perfect. So at first, I couldn't even open the arm. It was actually stuck like this for a very long time, and I basically had to learn how to swim with two legs and my right arm. And I kept on swimming in spite of the pain, and slowly I grew able to open the elbow and to push the water through my fingertips to some point once again. It was painful and difficult, but I was able to navigate the waters of the pool and to trust in my abilities, however limited, because I did love to swim and felt called to be in the water. And for those of you who are swimmers, you'll appreciate this. When I got back into the water for the first time, a lap in the pool took me a minute and 27 seconds. That's actually a pretty long time. But after six months of healing and practice, I was able to shave a minute off and managed to swim the lap in 27 seconds. I'll never forget the day that that happened. I was taking part in a competition, and my teammates were cheering me on as I tried to give it my all. Well, I came in second in time in my heat, and the whole team rushed forth and pulled me out of the water for a celebration and cheer at my success. Now, the winner and her teammates were totally bewildered. After all, I had lost, I had lost the race. But what they didn't realize that I had won something more precious. Instead of letting fear and pain and limitations hold me back, I dove in head first to give that lap and to give swimming and to give my life all the imperfect gifts that were mine to spare. So first we must know what we want to say yes to, what we feel called to say yes to. Then we have to learn how to say yes even through a time of doubt and even in spite of our limitations. And then often we have to learn to say no in order to say a stronger yes, to be able to say yes <coughs> clearly. <coughs> and to this, I turn to Faye Waddleton, who some of you may know um, from her work for reproductive rights uh, and Planned Parenthood. I heard Faye Waddleton speak at uh, my congregation, my home congregation, when I was a young adult. And she expressed a guiding sentiment that calls me back to my senses whenever I spread myself too thin. In order to say yes to something, we sometimes have to learn to say no. Amongst other achievements, she served as president of Planned Parenthood from 1978 to 1992. And all of us who care about reproductive rights owe her a debt of gratitude. 
I remember when she spoke afterwards, we were allowed to ask questions, and a member of the audience asked this, why did you decide to limit your work to women's issues? She replied that there are an infinite number of causes that she would be interested in working on, and if she tried to work on all of them, she would make such a slight difference that it would be imperceptible. However, if she made a choice and a lifelong commitment, she could make a huge impact. And that's exactly what she's done. And it's so important to have a sense of what your call is, because one person also asked that same question in a different way. As an African-American woman, they asked, why had she not made a difference in the lives of black people? To which she responded, women are 50% of that population. So she had a very clear sense of what she wanted to do. And we are in a time of discernment like that, ourselves. We are having a social justice reinvention task force help us to look at what is it, what is it that we want to say yes to, and what is it that that may mean saying no to, in order for us to have a truly deep impact. If we want to make a difference in the lives of children and youth and adults in terms of access to clean water, who among us is not moved by the story in Flint? It will mean making choices to allocate our time, our resources, financial and skill sets towards changing access to clean water. And imagine what we could do in a year together if we directed the $40,000 of giving, the thousands upon thousands of hours we donate, and the thousands upon thousands of skill sets that we have to that issue, or choosing something else. What about spending time eradicating racism? What would it look like to allocate our time, talent, and resources towards saying yes to that as a community in a really powerful way. What might we be able to achieve together? So that's part of that question that I think Faye Waddleton offers us and the Social Justice Reinvention Task Force offers us. What does it look like to say yes in a way that invites us to change our whole lives and impact the lives of others as well? in a way that is noticeable, healing, in a way that shows that if the Morristown Unitarian Fellowship were gone, so many things wouldn't happen, which is true, actually. If we were not here, so many conversations would not be had, so many things would not be possible in Morris County. So we have to learn how to listen to the call of how we lead our lives, what we are called to do with this finite, precious day, this finite, precious life, how we continue to say yes, even in doubt, and what it looks like to say yes, to say yes, when it means saying no to other things. 